Hello friends, welcome to another episode of BioNews. Today I have four papers to tell you guys about, beginning with uh, a paper by Tid Blad et al. This paper is a nationwide study in Sweden. Uh, they sought to determine whether childhood growth hormone treatment was associated with cardiovascular disease later in life. Despite the fact that this paper, this longitudinal study, only followed the cohort for 25 years, so that the eldest people were around the age of 50 at the time of the study. They did find that childhood growth hormone treatment was statistically significantly associated with cardiovascular disease and that the risk of cardiovascular disease, despite the people being only 50 years old, keep in mind, cardiovascular disease usually happens after 50. So these people may be dying at 60 at a much higher rate than, people, than they would normally die at 80, for example, but we don't know about that yet but they could still find statistically significant associations. And this was true for men and women. It was dose and duration dependent, and it was more significant for women than it was for men, interestingly. A paper by Choi et al. was a longitudinal study of 300 adolescent children. What they showed was that vitamin D status, meaning how much vitamin D the people had in their serum levels, was associated with, uh, not the people, the children, sorry, it's a study of 300 children. So the study showed that the vitamin D levels in these children was statistically significantly associated with their reaction to early childhood social stress. So if the children experienced social stress and had lower vitamin D levels, they were more likely to become antisocial or to develop antisocial behaviors as a response. So they had less resilience. Whereas the children with higher vitamin D levels had more resilience to social stress. A third paper by Lee et al. This paper measured hair cortisol levels among a cohort of Korean elderly uh, people living in a community dwelling. What they did was this. They measured the hair cortisol levels as a measure of retrospective stress hormone levels. Uh, hoping that it's a proxy somehow of stress, right? Which it probably is. And so they measure that, and then they compare that to two measures. One is how large of a social network these elderly Korean people had. And second is how close these elderly Korean people said their personal friendships or you know family friendships, whatever, relationships were. So what they found was that the actual size of the network was not associated with cortisol levels. But the closeness of friendships was inversely associated with cortisol levels. So the people that had the closest friendships, like imagine, so that's what I always say in my podcast, by the way, is one of the keys to happiness in life is to have a, a close group of friends that they're really like family, the people that you would die for, they would die for you. So these people that had close friends, they had lower cortisol levels in their hair. Finally, a paper by Chandra Sekaran et al, which sounds like a South Indian name and a wonderful one also. Uh, this paper is a review paper about the history of anticonvulsants uh, reducing or anticonvulsants being associated with bone, bone fractures. So they seem to reduce bone mineral density and reduce the, st the structural integrity of bones. Something that I had heard about before but didn't know exactly the mechanisms behind. So it's a review paper. I know it may not interest everybody. So I just wanted to summarize a couple of things here. Historically, so this has been known since the 70s that anticonvulsants, anti-epileptic medications increase fracture risks. But historically, it was thought that they did this mainly by inhibiting some CYP enzymes that are involved. Basically, when you inhibit those enzymes, vitamin D gets converted into an inactive form, so it becomes less relevant in the body. And things like phenobarbital were doing that. But there are drugs that don't affect the CYP enzymes, like prigabalin, that also seem to worsen bone mineral density. In fact, also a drug that I'm extremely fond of, called valproic acid or sodium valproate, I found out in this paper, seems to inhibit osteonectin, collagen 1, and cytoskeleton arrangement. So it seems interesting, maybe if somebody had to take long-term sodium valproate, which is of course a little hepatotoxic in the first place, but also maybe anti-cancer. Uh, I, I don't like that word, but I mean, it may be protective a little bit against, against cancers, who knows. Um, if you had to, maybe you would want to be on an androgen to upregulate some of that uh, bone mineral uh, synthesis. Anyway, what they found also was that men were 2.8 more times more likely to develop a fracture when they were on these anti-epileptic medications, while women were only 1.8 more times. Anyway guys, I wish you a great day and I'll see you tomorrow with another episode of BioNews.